This time on Town Line Garage. got going on here this is the second box that this truck has had we'll show you another one where I've already got kind of a sample cut of where the filler neck will come through I do have to do some trimming on this box and then pop a little access hole I have to make a cover box for that inside but I already got that figured out what I've been trying to figure out this morning is do I follow what I was going to do a while back and my initial plan, because this is my crusty rusty hinge from the last box, is I put my pivot point down here and then I was going to spring load or put a latch on the very top and have it swing out. What I'm thinking about now, since I've got a couple of these hinges from the stock fuel door is if I can figure out a pivot point to roll this like that. What I'm running into, and the reason why I went down here with the hinge to begin with, is that I got all this real estate down here. There's not a lot here, especially when you look at this, uh, you know, that, that shape is for the spring. It's just a kind of flat or a, a, a bow spring in there. It'd be great to have it just spring loaded so it could stay shut, but there's definitely not room to have this right here and the filler neck come through and not have the tail light just stick out like a mile. So that's what we're pondering. I won't show you all my head scratching activity, but uh, I'm going to just start cutting and testing on a few things. Sometimes it's hard to figure out you know, exactly where your pivot point needs to be. I think that it needs to tuck in and I need to have a similar hinge style. No, not this gauge, not this size, but I think I need a similar hinge configuration like that so I can tuck the taillight up against the truck. We're going to stare at this a little while and see what we can come up with and move over to the thinking chair. Here is the original box. Like I said, I've got, I already know what I need to do for cutting out to get this thing in here. I've got a little bit of wiggle room. I had it mounted like that. I could potentially lower it a little bit, but it's, as you can see, it's, it's fairly tight against the sides. So that's why I was really shooting for hinge activity would be down here because we also have tail bulbage that goes in there in there as i mentioned i do need to do some slicing and dicing the inside not too bad so i'll do a similar cut i might be able to shrink it down a little bit so trying to keep this in mind when i'm staring at the new box in there trying to figure out a good way to Get the hinge to work. Here's my old hinge. That way it's still kind of backup plan. I do have two tail, tail lights to play with. I'm thinking tying into the bottom. I'm worried about that being weak even if I put a spine up the side of this light. I do think if I could swing it this way it would be a little bit easier to get the neck in there. Because when I was pulling this apart with a screwdriver, when I'd fill up the last few years, I would just kind of let this hang. And, you know, if you've ever filled up a 
you know, the vehicle. You've got a, you know, everything is kind of here in the way. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take this hinge and what I'm noticing is I've got separate pins, which is good because I think with where the tail lamps, the reverse lamp is located, that kind of crashes with some of this stuff. So I'm picturing in my, my brain where I could hack and whack this thing together, no matter what I got to chop here. But I'm thinking about leaving the spring attached to one pivot point and then slicing the second pivot point, putting a piece of flat stock or angle in between and stretching the mounts. Those are going to have to change anyway, but just for mock-up, making the hinge points further apart so I can, I can kind of span this area. It's going to be tough to keep all that in line, but I'm going to try and use some of these stamping lines, witness marks to keep this thing from being twisted. Um, one of my first cuts I'll probably make is I'm going to come in right here and just slice that right up there. If I do a side hinge, I am going to take and kind of put a, a spine here. I'll grind off these, these ridges and put a flat piece against here. Build some bracing across, just some light, you know, sheet metal or really small stock, and then kind of do another span here just so there's a good grip across all four mounting points of this and we're not ripping the tail light apart. Something I'm looking at, if I hinge this way, this lip does go over this lip, but I can come in and just do like a, an eighth of an inch cut on this plastic, and that would allow that to, to close it tight. So I'm going to do some puttering, slicing, and cutting and see if I can get some kind of mock-up of this hinge configuration. Something I'm concerned with is that with this hinge just as it sits, the pivot point wants to be out here, which would take this whole tail light and scooch it back a gross amount, and that'd just be ugly. So I'll be trying to figure out how to get that pivot point tucked back and still have room for that filler neck. So... Easiest way for me to do that is knowing that I have an extra part here. Just kind of start cutting it, tacking it with the welder, and see if I can come up with a cobbled up rehashed hinge here. So that's that's closed. It's really closed. I need that to be back in here. And as you can see, this the bulk of that content is right where that filler neck needs to go. So we'll do a little cutting, a little bit of welding. And a lot of head scratching yet. We'll see what we come up with. Well, after a lot of head scratching, we are making some progress here. I'll kind of show you, show you where things are at. A couple mock-ups we were working on. Let's see here. Where should we start? After staring at it for a while, we decided to get the uh, get serious, get out the CAD. You know, cardboard assisted drawing package here. So, started out with a you know, cereal box cardboard, comes in handy. Um, I want to make sure this metal tucked up against, I want to make sure this tucked up against this tail light because that is going to close right up tight against this. So that metal is going to come back right there. And I do have two taillights here, so I can kind of show you why I think I can squeeze that in there. We've got these standoffs that I took off on this guy. So these standoffs are going to be replaced with a sheet of metal that's on the bench. And these tabs will be replaced with probably a support going back over to that. You might weld on some, some bracing there. But this is the one we're going to keep working with. The other modification we did to the taillight so far is we got this lip here just been shortened up so see this is a little shorter than this guy and here's why so we are going to try and hinge in this way and that used to engage 
back that way, then the holes will go through the side. So we want to be able to clear, clear, and then we'll come back here. And if we want to, we can always add some black tape or some black paint, cover that up. So here's where a couple trials landed us. We said we got the cardboard out to match that light. Cut our metal strap out, go through there. We cut our nubs off. And then we started figuring out if this hinge is gonna be anything that we can use. Um, it used to be attached to the old square door here. Hacked and whacked and I think it might work in reverse. So when I say reverse, this used to be the stationary portion and this was the swing. And I'm gonna flip it around because I need this arc that we got going there. Um, the reason I'm not starting completely from scratch is I want to use the spring that's in here because it's a pretty pretty hefty simple spring that I'm hoping will keep the tail light shut. That's been a sticking point for me why this has sat so many years is I didn't know how I wanted to do a latch system because when I was working on this type of hinge I knew that it would need a positive engagement latch to hold that up whereas right now where we're at we're doing this I think that spring is going to hold it taut and I won't have to do a custom latch so version one was cardboard version two was metal strip hooked on to the light, and then we got out the real thin sheet metal in our ductwork tape. And I kind of mocked that up. You see my spring is not in here, so, so I can mess around with it. First version, I taped this together, so connected the metal strap to the spring. And that was just to see if I could get clearance. I'll show you what clearance I was looking at in a minute. Uh, kind of version two here is a little thicker. This is an exhaust pipe I cut up. Again, just so I could do some different stages of mock-up to see if my concept is even going to work. And then I'm actually working on permanent version now, where I slim this down and need something that's a little skinnier this way for clearance. But uh, a little bit more top. A little bit more stout. So, clearance we're looking at is getting everything to fit in here. You notice I'm not cut out for the gas cap yet, because I want to see where this hinge lands. So with this being loose, and this is the spring that goes on there, it's pretty, it, it's stout. Is So here's that, here's that piece that's going to fit up against the body. And now you can start to see why I've been messing around with this, this radius here so much, because I didn't know if I could clear because my first couple samples had this pivot point very close to this edge and what that did is make when I went to open it it just scrubbed right against the side of the truck so I need to move the pivot point back towards the or sorry forward in vehicle and as far out of the vehicle as I can that's kind of where I'm at now I'm right up in I don't know if you can see, but there's a corner right there. I'm tucking this hinge as far up in there as I can. Kind of line up there where that's going to go. If I hold it, you can see it's it's going to be tight. And I'm rubbing right now because I'm just holding it in there with my hands, but eventually it's going to come out that way. And let's see. Let's give this another try here. It's easier with two paws. So just like that, you hear we're not catching anymore, but my holes are lined up in the body where that tail light needs to go. Still going to be tight, but I can neck down this steel a little bit with the grinder at that tightest spot. Bottom and the top aren't too bad. but So you can kind of see where that's going to go. I'm working on upgaging this strap here. And as far as attaching in the vehicle, I have some room back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a strip of metal and weld it on to this, pop a couple holes in it, so that I'll have kind of a bolt here 
in the same area on the bottom. And I will line those up and probably have either a, a drill pad I'll tack in here or even tack in some studs because two, you know, two quarter inch bolts with a decent size head that, that shouldn't put too much stress on this sheet metal. By the time you put the welds on there, you'll have, you know, that kind of a footprint. Just like having a, a weld stud in rough operation here. I got close to uh, taking a break for the weekend and trying to find something in the junkyard, but I don't think I would find something quite with that shape. So we're going to make that up and at least tack it together and see see where that's at. We're back on the workbench here. I mentioned when this is closed, I've got this real estate back here that I'm going to make a mounting strip. Probably take this strap and tuck that back in there. Or maybe even an old piece of the old hinge. It's all the same material thickness. So, kind of do my crayon go. You know, kind of do. One of those numbers, something like that, and then we'll we'll glue that together with our liquid metal, and then pop a couple more holes on it. Probably not going to use this. Just trying to show you guys what what that's going to look like. I'm going to get back to it because one hand is not quite enough, and we got to keep moving. Time's a wasting. So I kept these mounting holes roughly the size of the bolt, which isn't good for putting things together. Um, but as I was figuring out where things needed to go, that kind of kept my tolerances a little bit tighter. So I drilled them through right at a quarter or just under a quarter. And now once I have everything welded in the truck, I'll go back here and give myself a little bit of, a little bit of clearance. And uh, like I said, might make a shim pad that goes back here just so it's holding up square against some more sheet metal but i really don't think this is going to go anywhere it's it's got a little bit of heft to it and it'll have the light on it but um i'm gonna pop some holes in and do some skinning up of this this overall bracketry here but that's kind of where we're at we'll let that cool down do some grinding in there clean up the welds make sure that this can sit flat where it needs to go and uh yeah we'll move on i do have a little bit of mark here. I need to skinny out for where the light. This is not the light I'm using. This is my spare. But uh, I have a little bit of clearancing to do with this strap, and I might pop some holes in it, 
Do a little bit of grinding here for extra clearance against the body. On the body panel, I'm saving for last minute to take these clips out, and I can always finesse it just a little bit that way to make up for the thickness of this material. I'm saving that till the end, just because if I build it and it fits pretty well up to that, it'll just give me a little bit more insurance. I don't want to count on that unless I absolutely need it. <laughs> Alright, so here's where we're at right now. I got my studs in there. I actually put the spring back on the uh, the hinge here. I'm test fit number like five for this morning. Pretty happy where things are at currently. I did have to come back in here and snip out a little relief. You'll never, you'll never really see it unless you really look because what I had in my third test fit is I'd come back here and that spring wasn't quite, call it cammed over. To hold it open because it needs to be whole idea using this stock spring setup is it'll hold it open and hold it shut so i got that in there see i got a little bit extra thread there because i probably want to i wanted opportunity to shim in or out if i needed to you know because this is kind of getting winged together and then uh ideally put a lock nylock nut on there and you need a little extra thread for that so Pretty happy with where I'm at here. This hinge here is just still tacked together. So when I'm happy with it, I'll go back and burn it up the rest of the way. Right now, and even when it's welded up, I'll still be able to tweak it a little bit and get, get things bent up. Um, currently pretty good with where that's at. Uh, what I'm gonna do right now is probably mark where these are hitting so I can come back and clearance that. And then I'm gonna pop the tail light on. So this hinge needs to go on first tail light's going to come in kind of from the outside and I still might put some bows to connect this to the other tail light mounting spot because we used to have screws coming through here but I'm going to pop this on here and just kind of see overall where the rest of the tail lights fitting. I've just got some sheet metal screws for now and hopefully I can just kind of get it lined up just like I'm putting on the regular tail regular tail light mount I'll be able to get these started and they'll be in the right ish spot. I didn't use a hex head like I got, but that's what I had on the shelf. A little bit hard to get the tool in there. seem too bad from over here. We'll have to do some tweaking to get things to be in exactly the right spot, but let's see if it'll open or if I got a I got something locked up. Alright, so something's catching. Something's catching on the on the actual tail light. All right, so that's going to be a problem. Something I didn't see. It is a little bit floppy, so I will want to put those straps in. To connect this to that. So we take a little bit of the spring out. But what I'm going to run into is I'm already hitting where this socket's going to go in. So I've got some more clearancing to do here. And I'm going to have to put that socket in there and see exactly how bad I'm hitting. Luckily, it's on this inside lip. So I'm gonna do my best to stay away from the spot welds. I got a spot weld here and here. So I think I do have some opportunity to hollow this out. Um, it'll be similar to down here 
which that's not going to hurt anything. It'll just uh, give me a little bit more swing. She's bouncy, but it's a whole tail light hanging off of the sheet metal, so that's fine. And I think what I'll do too is, as I mentioned, I'll put a pad behind this mount. This mount is pretty sturdy, you can hear. That's not springing too much. It's a cantilever, you know, rack that goes back and then swings out. So it's kind of a long arm on on this to reach out, and that's just the nature of the beast here. This is my first test with the actual light on, so I'm not too disappointed despite the catching. And uh, I think I'll try and do some shimming of the spring, but I'm probably going to need a little bit of a magnet to kind of hold it in place the rest of the way. So this can kind of work. I don't want to rely on this clipping here, even though that that would be okay-ish, because um, it'll just wear out the metal here. It's not that, that wasn't my intent. So I'll do some bending and pushing and prodding to try and get this tuned in a little more. But it's not moving. All right, so we continue to make progress on our hidden fuel filler neck door or taillight thingamabob. I haven't gotten a ton of video on this because I've been doing a lot of head scratching and it would make for a bit of a boring video. Quite a bit of cardboard engineering, but uh, I do have the hinge pretty well situated. I ended up going with some magnets along with the factory spring hinge just because there's a lot more weight with this taillight on that hinge mechanism than the factory door would be. I don't like the magnets, but this thing's been sitting for a very long time and it's time to just kind of get it together. So I think it'll work. You can see this is, it's got a pretty good hold. Got some duct tape on there for padding right now. And um, I think I'm gonna get some, either some nice black tape to look, you know, like some factory bumpers or uh, some plasti dip or something on there. Here's my factory spring hinge. It's basically chopped apart and flipped around. And then uh, basically this is all just materials I had laying around. With all the weight hanging off the end, I did kind of build myself a little bit of a pencil brace to, to use all the factory mounting locations. So I've got the two bolts here and here. And then there's two more here and here that are actually holding the magnet on, as well as tying back in on this round bar here. This will all get painted with some engine enamel once it's wrapped up, but I can do that at the same time or after I'm doing the rest of the body work here. So I just want to get all the dirty, grinding, nasty work done before I'm spraying this with primer and paint. I did have to go on uh, Amazon and get some lower profile connectors here. There'll be Both of these have the same one now just to keep everything tight. This one doesn't have an issue against the body, but it gets pretty tight against the cap. This one up here really needs this low profile to come around this corner. So that's kind of where we're at with the hinge. I do have two quarter inch bolts. I've got welded onto the body. I can put some shim behind there if I want to play with that this direction. I uh, do have a little bit of slop in those holes. Things do get pretty tight as far as clearance goes. Got this one will be a problem down here, but this is the tightest of all. And I did verify that this fits up there. I've got two of those. I just got the one out now. I'm going to come back and run these wires back. I'll zip tie into here and then kind of loop around. And then I don't know if I'm going to go whoosh, down here or try and scoot back into here. This is an empty cavity too. I could pop a hole and grommet right here would probably be my best bet. And I can do that at any given time. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that right now. I can always pop a grommet in there. I do have clearance down to the ground for any spillage and it will be pretty well vented with that much of a hole there. 
about ready to tack in my plate that I'm going to mount the filler neck to. Filler neck I ended up going with, this is actually a neck out of a TJ, like a 90s, 94 Jeep Wrangler. It does use the same cap style as the S10. This is the S10 cap. So I did have to cut into the bed just a titch. I will weld that panel on once I get the bed off here again. There's filler neck underneath here. Um, it's kind of exposed. So I'm going to do a little bit extra clearance trim in here. And then I'll take a larger piece of exhaust pipe. I think that'll have a nice radius on it and then make myself a cardboard template, trim that out, weld that in, either body filler, seam sealer, I don't, I'm not going to be too particular about what that looks like. It's still better than the last time I tried this as I came like all the way up here and hacked it all out. So still fairly low profile. So the neck I got is from a Jeep. And actually the rubber hoses as well. I am making a manual piece right here out of black pipe. Not my first choice, but I was having a hard time finding things that were in stock. So I went into the hardware store and that's what fit this. And then I welded up an adapter to go into the S10 Blazer tank, which is I think a two inch. So a lot larger, pretty big step up. But the smaller diameter here will allow me to snake this through in the places where it's not supposed to be so let's see that's the size i was trying to deal with just a little bit much to get that to wrap up so that's my jeep filler neck i did have to modify that i'm going to pull that out and i'll show you what i ended up doing there So here's the Jeep filler neck. You can kind of start to see why I chose this one. It is a little shiny. Um, frankly, just not a lot of time to go hunt the junkyards and hope to find one that's not all rusted out here in Michigan. Um, so I ended up scouring the internet just for the different styles and kind of eyeballing this. And it looked like something that would work. I did end up cutting and welding into it more than I wanted to. But um, as you can see, I moved some stuff around here. First thing I ended up doing is I wanted to change the angle of the main output. So what I did here, I did not cut through the whole thing. I came through about two thirds with the, with the old uh, hacksaw, bumped it up with a rubber mallet, kept coming down with the blade, bump it up with a mallet, come down with a blade, bump it up with a mallet so I could slowly start chewing away on my pie cut. And then just kind of weld it over that, came out pretty good. And then the vent tube, I had to kind of flip-flop its clocking. It was coming out here where I've got this patch. Um, but if that sits here in the bed, I've got this wide open cavity over here that I can run my hose through. And off to the right, that would be just kind of poking right into the, the bed of the truck. So, or inside the bed of the truck. So, you know, just popped a hole, welded that guy in there, and then had a patch panel out of whatever I had laying around from patching up the floors. So that'll be about as snug as I can get this. You still have a kind of standard vent cap. I did look at some of the ventless Ford options, um, like a Ford Fusion from the 2010 Fusion. Drive Daily has no fuel cap. I thought that could be slick, but um, more money than I wanted to put at something to just cut it apart and not know if it would actually work. So this guy here I cut out with cardboard first and then I've kind of been honing in on getting the fit. This little, got a little dippy do up here. Things are getting kind of tight with this hinge once it starts closing. So there's all my hacking and banging around I had to do to get some clearance in there. Um, yeah, not pretty, but that's why we got this, this nice plate to put on top of there. Um, you won't see this again after it's welded in here. I'll hit it with some engine enamel just to kind of protect it. But uh, I'm not going to burn this in like crazy. All it's going to do is hold that filler neck in there. I'll probably put a 
you know, kind of a short tack on each plane, kind of psh, 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 something like that. So I can just hit it with a wire wheel and then I'll spring over the top. But I want to make sure that I'm done clanging and banging on the back side there before I put this on because I won't be able to get to that back side very easily again without cutting this back out. But as soon as I tack this in here, I will be just about ready to pull this bed back off and really start digging into finishing up my sanding, uh, final bondo work, and getting some primer on this thing. So really excited to be at this point, but also just ready to be done with messing around with the spiller work. Kind of where we're going with this. Remember to save on uh, at least a little bit of cardboard around the shop. Cereal boxes work great or other packaging that's not, you know, real thick. <clears throat> that's what I used for a template for this inside piece as well as this little goiter bracket here. I was hoping I wouldn't have to cut into the bed, but I have a combination of denting that I did here that it helps this get a little bit simpler. So just kind of start with a flat sheet of cardboard and sit here with some scissors and a sharpie and just kind of get to where I thought it could be. And this is a spare piece from when I did my rockers. Just kind of using a body hammer on the spare piece of railroad tie we got. And I don't think I'm even going to weld this all the way around. I'm going to get some solid tacks in there and probably just hit this with some seam sealer. That's what a lot of the joints already have on this bed from the factory. I don't want to go crazy with body filler in here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be decent anyway. So I got a bed mat I'll probably put in here and I'll just trim that corner out. But that's fitting pretty good. I wanted to get this squared away before I tack this guy in here. You can see I don't have any holes in this neck yet. That's fine. Those can actually go in later if I wanted to. Um, I'm probably actually going to zip one or two in right now. One thing I liked about this Jeep filler neck is that it had a hole pattern all the way around. So if I had to chop a pie slice or a corner off of this, there was a lot of other mounting opportunities there without welding on another panel. So it's working out pretty good. I did a little bit more slicing over here. Pretty happy even though that's tight. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to get this uh, inner patch panel tacked in. I'm going to do that before I do this guy. And the reason being is I want to make sure that I can get this stubby filler neck in and out of the body side before everything gets burned in. So I'm going to tack the inside piece, make sure I can get this neck out this outside piece tacked in. Again, make sure I can get this neck in and out. Neither of these pieces really need to be welded in, you know, like you're burning a trailer hitch together. A few solid tacks, and that's going to be as good as a couple spot welds that the factory would have put on. I'll probably still over weld it, but it's not going to be... She ain't going to need very much. <laughs> So here we are, got it tacked in there, I'll come in with the grinder make sure I don't have any high spots and then we'll just kind of tool out some seam sealer and we'll call that good enough. Now I'm going to come in and uh, do the same kind of thing here, probably a couple maybe half inch or so tacks. This will have a little bit of, you know, when you're really heaving on that, not really. but just not a lot of room in here. I'm going to try and not even do seam sealer here. We'll see how the how clean I got the welds. But uh, I'm going to 
Make sure I can get the filler neck in, filler neck out. We'll put that guy. <clears throat> yep. So, take some finesse, but she pits. Um, yeah. I'm going to make sure everything as far as burrs. Make sure you got any final hammering back in there, any kind of deburr, rat tail file or whatever. Um, and then I'll put the filler neck in, probably zip one screw in, and then I'll I'll tack this guy in place. Here we are. We're wrapping up. We got the inner panel tacked in. With that, with a little bit of seam sealer, we got a hinge all figured out. Magnets might be temporary, but that's what we got. We'll dip these in plastic dip, not the spray version. There's a dip that I think you can still get. We'll be spraying this down with engine enamel probably before or maybe after we paint the rest of the truck, just because that should hold up a little bit better in this vicinity um we got our interface tacked in i probably will do some seam sealer in here just to kind of clean it up i don't want to go crazy burning this in with weld and grinding it down it's just it's not worth it to be honest um, i'm going to hold up on putting the screws in here i can sneak in there with a cordless drill upon final assembly we can sneak this neck in and out of there um, i've actually got the hose kind of temporary hooked up so that's what we got in there Tacks aren't the prettiest thing. It's, it was kind of hard to clean off the, uh, the paint on the inside of this cavity here. Um, no sandblasting, just kind of scuffing it with some sandpaper, but we'll get in there with some, we'll grind it with the uh, die grinder and it'll be pretty enough. We do have clearance on the door, the brace we had here, a little bit of a bend in it. So take a peek at the underneath. <clears throat> we will be touching up the hose when we put this back on but this is also another jeep piece and then i got a little piece of pipe here and then that will end up going into this guy here so or hopefully so when i get the vex back off to finish prepping for paint i'm gonna trim out this seam here put a little protection here for the hose but i like that the tight area underneath the box on top of the frame is metal that's how we're looking underneath there once i got everything clocked it is a very tight fit very slight angle down to get into the tank so i'm starting you know kind of up here and still got that slight angle down it still should be about you know close to what some of the their cars used to have. Pretty excited to be this far. Looking forward to moving on with the rest of the paintwork here. Probably be a slower fill, but um, had to follow through with what I started however many years ago. So real quick summary back through. This is our factory tail light. This is the factory hinge that was on this truck. It's cut, basically flipped around and welded back together. Got some scrap metal here attaching to my factory 
points on this taillight. Modifications I did on the taillight itself as I trim this back about an eighth of an inch with a razor knife so I could clear this swing. I've got a couple Amazon magnets here. I probably will eventually do some sort of a click latch or ball detent. But um, so it's half held shut by the spring, half held shut with magnets. I have a filler neck from a 94 Jeep Wrangler. Um, those years had the same filler cap as General Motors. The flexible hose beyond this is off of the same Jeep Wrangler. I have a piece of black pipe in between this neck and the S10 because this is inch, inch and a quarter. And then it goes into, I think, two inch into the S10 tank. One more piece of rubber hose between that pipe and the tank. And this is a fuel tank off of a 80s S10 Blazer. That was put in a long time ago, but that's basically as close as what you get to factory location. A little bit of cutting in here, but not too bad. That's my alignment with the tail light on where it ended up. Just to compare, I do have the... Keep in mind how this is not quite lined up here. Or almost, but not quite. And then we got this here. Again, almost, but not quite lined up. Back to the alignment. Pretty big gap there for out of the box. So pretty happy with uh, our end fitment there. A little bit of cobbling, but that's what we got. Fill her up. Well, that's going to close the door on another episode of Townline Garage. Do appreciate you watching. Hope you get out and work on your project. Don't let it sit for... 10 years like I did. And uh, if you enjoyed this, please uh, hit the like button, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe to the channel. That'd be great. Check out the other videos on the S10 as well. Really excited to be moving on to getting this paintwork wrapped up. More sanding, primer, sanding, then finally we get to spray. Till next time, keep it between the ditches. Adios. Oh.